All right. The study on Leviticus and how the land could become polluted got me thinking about the divine council. I have often wondered what the fallen angel's plan is in the last days. The typical explanation is that is that they just want to kill or convert as many Christians as they can, but that really doesn't fit in their time being short and acting in haste, nor does it do anything to save themselves. I think, if anything, they would want to protect their kingdom that is now under siege. Their actions should primarily be about saving themselves, not destroying us humans. Are there any indications from the Bible of things that bolster their reign in defense against our siege? Are there any indications in the Bible of a method or a stalling to temporarily retain the legal rights to their allotted land? Right. Well, they don't they don't have any legal rights to retain because uh, a few episodes ago in Colossians, we talked about the passages that associate the resurrection with the nullification of the status of the old sons of God over the nations. There. Yes, that status was originally given by the Most High, and the Most High has now nullified it, withdrawn it, and delegitimized it because of the work of Christ and the resurrection and the ascension. So they don't have any any rights to retain here. However, I, I agree with with the the trajectory uh, toward the end of that question, the idea of a, of stalling. I think that's on target. So I don't, I don't personally, I don't think that the agenda of the you know the gods of the nations, we'll just use that that terminology, principalities and powers. Okay. I don't think the agenda is killing off believers because that's nowadays that's like sending them to heaven. Well, thanks a lot. I don't think the agenda is killing off believers as much as it is as it is forestalling the fullness of the Gentiles, uh, because it's it's the fullness of the Gentiles which I'll use the word delay, which delays the day of the Lord and the return of Jesus. The day of the Lord, the final you know day of the Lord and the return of Jesus are those two things are married in scripture in, in biblical eschatology day of the lord again in, in in you know maybe we should do devote a whole episode to the day of the lord uh, because this this seems to keep coming up a lot but that is the time viewed by the prophets when the righteous are vindicated the wicked are punished the nations are it, it's it's a reset button the nations are brought back into the family into relationship with the true god you know, there there is no more rebellion. You know, it, it's it's a reset button, and it's both judgment and reward, and and the you know it's it, it's it's married in the Old Testament to to the concept of Messiah as as the you know par excellence the Son of David and all that, and it, in the wake of the New Testament events, New Testament theology, it's therefore married to the second coming of Christ. Those things, Day of the Lord and the Second Coming, therefore. Both of those things are in holding pattern, Scripture says, because God is looking for the fullness of the Gentiles to be brought in, the Gentiles being brought into the family of God. And Paul says in Romans you know, 9 through 11 in a couple places, he connects that idea with the, you know, this is a Mike word, this isn't a Pauline word, with, with Jews sort of coming to their senses and reconsidering the Messiah. He, he, he you know, the, when yeah. The Jew, the Jewish nation, okay, the those who are sons of you know Abraham, you know, sons of the patriarchs by by flesh, physically, there is a partial hardening, you know, on them. Paul uses the word hardening there, so that the Gentiles can be brought into the family. Okay, this is the fulfillment of, of the Abrahamic covenant, Genesis twelve three, that all through through the seed of Abraham, who is Christ, Paul says in Galatians. All of the nations will be blessed. They're, they're being brought back in. When that happens, whenever God decides, okay, we have enough of them now, then presumably Israel, okay, physical Israel, I would, I would assume, has some sort of awakening or some sort of other, you know, revival or whatever to again come to their senses and embrace the Messiah. Now, we, we know from Romans 9 that that's not going to be everybody. Okay, it's not going to be all the Jews. Uh, Roman, Romans 9 is very clear about that. But those two things, this fullness of the Gentiles, the, you know, the revival you know, of, of the ethnic you know, people of, of Abraham, those two things are precursors to the day of the Lord and the second coming. Now, it would be in the best interest, okay, 
if you were if you were again one of the principalities and powers, the thing that you don't want to see happen is the salvation of the nations. Okay, is is the salvation of people all over the world. Okay, this fullness of the Gentiles idea. That's what you want to forestall. That's what you want to stop. That's what you want to slow down. Again, you you, you know you're not you're not bigger than God. You know that, that a punishment has been decreed upon you, Psalm 82. This is why the Psalm 82 ends with, rise up, O God, take back the nations, okay? You know that as long as you can put that off, you're going to retain your position, even though it's delegitimized, even though you don't have any legal claim here anymore to these nations, because God is now seeking them to come back into the family. You want to forestall this as long as possible. It, it, it's, it's life extension, okay? So I, I don't know if, if it was on a Q&A podcast or what context it was. I, somebody asked a question, I think, one time about um, do, the, do the principalities and powers think they can win? And my answer was it depends how you define victory, <laughs> okay? Do they think they're, they're bigger than God and can defeat God? No, they're not idiots, okay? But if victory is keeping the ball rolling, you know, the whole guerrilla warfare thing, always have an army in the field, never go away. You know, that, okay, if, if that's the way you define victory, well, then, yeah, we can see something of a plan emerge, you know, from, from certain things you know, said in Scripture. And, and my argument would be that it's, this, this is linked. All of this is linked to the fullness of the Gentiles idea. You know, the reference to the devil, you know, some people will say, well, the devil knows that his time is short. Well, yeah. If you actually go look up where that's said, it's Revelation twelve twelve. And again, this I, this I talk about in Unseen Realms. Since I read, let me just read Revelation 12, 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to you, O earth and sea. For the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. This is the war in heaven thing that erupts after the birth of the Messiah, and so on and so forth. So this war has been going on. Okay, and he said, the devil knows his time is short. Well, he knows it's definite. Since I read Luke 10, 17, Okay, the, the whole thing, uh, Luke 10, it's not, not, not just verse 17, but other verses in Luke 10 about Satan being, you know, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. To me, that is the end of, his, of the legitimacy of his accusing believers before God in his counsel. That's over with, because now the Messiah has come, and, and God is going to have his way. Jesus is going to go to the cross. He is going to die for the, the, you know, the redemption of humanity, and so on and so forth. So he's a prosecutor without a case. Anyone who is a member of Jesus' kingdom, the kingdom of God, the, you know, the devil has no claim over them anymore. What's the claim of the devil? It's death. It's permanent estrangement from God. That's over with, because Messiah is going to die, and he's going to rise again. And all those who are united to him will rise with him. Okay, he has no case anymore. He has nothing to say. So be, get out of here. Be gone. You know, go, go you know, bring your accusations somewhere else. You know, it, it, you know, he doesn't have an audience anymore. God isn't listening. So since I, 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 I look at Luke chapter 10 there, Revelation 12, 12 is sort of signifying the same sort of thing. The short time means the clock has been ticking since Jesus launched the kingdom of God during his incarnation. So it's been 2,000 years since now. Are we any closer to the fullness of the Gentiles, you know, being you know, brought into the kingdom now than we were then? I mean, I can't answer those questions because I'm not God. My point is that the end of the present circumstances comes, you know, when, whenever God decides, okay, that, that's what I had in mind. You know, the fullness of the Gentiles has been brought in. Now my people Israel, you know, have a chance to believe in me again. You know, all this, or, or they, something happens where they're going to turn to the Messiah again. However, that works. We're not, we're not really given a full description of that in the New Testament. But all of that, again, that comes in connection with precursor to the Day of the Lord, which is an event or series of events that is the reset button. You know, all those, all those things are connected. In, in the New Testament, and that it, it's the end of the salvation plan. From there, you know, we get the new heaven, the new earth. We get the final judgment, both of unbelievers and also the beast and, you know, you know the false prophet, all the bad guys, you know, the, the, the watchers in the abyss, you know, all this kind of stuff. They're, all that's done away with. But again, those ideas are, are interconnected, and we have this precursor thing called the fullness of the Gentiles that's still in operation. So if I wanted to stall the program, if I wanted to extend my influence, my my life, really, that's what I would do. You keep people from entering the kingdom. 
you don't need to you know kill them off. I mean, you you keep people from entering the kingdom, you know, because that's that's the greater concern here. So I do think that the questioner's instincts in that regard are you know are on target. I think that's the trajectory that you would want to follow in answering that question.